We're talking about mushrooms today. They're great food for us, but they're also good for the environment. You know, mushrooms are a big part of why uh, the forest system works. It helps break down the materials, uh, creates uh, rich soil systems for our plants to grow in. They are the decomposers, the main decomposers out in nature. So think about all of those dead things laying around. And if we didn't have things like mushrooms and other funguses, those dead things would just pile up, pile up, pile up. So they're a, um, a critical part of the ecosystem as well. Mushrooms play an important role in the forest. They're not only decomposers, they're part of the food cycle. A lot of poisonous mushrooms that you and I can't eat, squirrels can eat, turtles can eat, they have digestive juices that protect them. Their fruiting body, which is what we call the mushroom, the part we see above the ground, um, is not always active. Sometimes they're just in the ground as their mycelium, which is kind of their root system, and so we don't see them. There are so many different ones that we don't know about. The guesstimate is like 1.5 billion, and we've only identified 500,000. So there are thousands we've never seen a fruiting body for. There are mushrooms that we're finding that are very beneficial to us incorporate in our diet to boost our immune system, help uh, fight and prevent disease. Uh, they're antiviral, antibacterial in some cases. Some of our most beneficial medicines, penicillin is a fungus. So they're really important, not just to look at and identify and say, isn't that pretty or isn't that unusual. The love of mushrooms is always something that I sort of grew, grew up with. I spent a lot of times in the, in the woods, camping and hiking. I went through scouting when I was younger, and so mushroom identification in, in the wild was always something that interests me uh, from just sort of a, a hobby level. We go out and do a lot of mushroom talks and walk around and show people how they decompose logs. If you think about lichens, that's a combination of fungus and algae together. The fungus is up against the tree and the algae is the part on the outside. So when you look at a lichen on a tree, you're looking at the algae but if you peel it off or if it falls off, the part that touched the tree is a fungus. This is the algae side of a lichen. That is the fungal side. Some funguses can lie dormant, not reproduce for years and years and years, and then they land in the right spot and they can produce. The spores can, are carried on the wind and are, in most cases, very, very tiny. They can travel hundreds of miles. Um, they can travel over the ocean. If we took some samples of this particular pond, there would probably be dozens of little funguses in the water if you looked at it under a microscope or with a hand lens or some kind of magnification. Uh, it's not something that you can see with the naked eye. A lot of the funguses out there are not beneficial to us personally. They're beneficial to the ecosystem. There are funguses that make us sick. There are funguses that if you eat them or ingest them accidentally and they get into your intestinal system, they can really wreak some havoc. Black mold is a fungus. Um, that's something that grows in damp, dark places, a lot of times in your basement. Um, inhaling the spores of that can make people really, really sick. It's one of, mold is one of the main allergens that we have, particularly here in East Tennessee. So mostly they like warm, moist areas that are dark. They don't need much sunlight because they don't photosynthesize. Where we find them here a lot of times are up in trees or down on rotting logs or even in the leaf mold, what we call leaf mold, which is just where the fallen leaves are starting to decay. This time of year people walk through the leaves and kick up the leaves. You're releasing a lot of those kinds of spores that make us, our heads stop up, you know, that, that give us those East Tennessee allergies. They are beneficial to us in other ways if you think about all the things that require a fungus or a mushroom to be produced. Bread, beer. Mushrooms are um, low in fat, they're carbohydrate rich, uh, they're a good protein substitute in most cases, um, chock full of minerals and some of the other vitamins that are difficult for us to get without consuming other things that are also sort of bad for our body. Growing your own mushrooms has become more attractive uh, as the, the price of mushrooms gets higher in our marketplace. For the home gardener and home cultivator, they can find ways to save some money um, by producing the mushrooms at home, but also they're able to get a very fresh product. We specialize in mushroom culture and spawn for those who are interested in growing mushrooms in the garden or at home. 
We also um, stock a wide range of mushroom products from uh, the medicinal mushrooms, uh, dried culinary and specialty mushrooms, and pretty much just about anything that's, that's related to the fungus. Things like shiitake mushrooms are great meat substitutes because they can satisfy that craving for that steak or red meat we crave. By growing them at home in our gardens, uh, we're able to get them when they're chock full of the good things for us um, at their peak and prime for flavor, um, but also we get the satisfaction of producing food in our home garden. Of the mushrooms that we specialize in, we're primarily working with mushrooms that are easy to grow, on wood or wood-based media, as well as straw or similar things. So these are um, sterilizers for, that we use to sterilize the media. And sometimes they stick. I actually did it. Uh, sterilized dowels for our, our plugs. Then we add the mushroom mycelium to the plugs. And so when they grow, we know that it's just the mycelium that we're interested in growing, not some foreign mycelium or bacteria or other things that be, can be contaminants. This is a laboratory and it's uh, sterile and this is where we grow all the mushroom mycelium. We sell the cultures or, or the mushroom blocks, grow kits or the plugs to grow on logs. The most popular mushroom for people to grow is shiitake mushroom. For our shiitake log workshops, we simply take our freshly cut hard, hard wood, show people how to drill it, insert the mushroom plugs into the log, uh, cover it with wax to protect the sites, and then we go over the details that are involved with the care and maintenance of the mushroom log once it's been produced. It's very easy to do at home, and your mushroom gardens can be small or large, and they can be productive for years to come.